Good morning, everyone. I would like you to turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter number one, the book of Philippians chapter number one. And when you get there, we're going to just read two verses beginning in verse number 20. Philippians chapter one, verse number 20, the Bible reads, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Let's pray together this morning. Father, we do thank you for uh, your wonderful grace towards us. We thank you for what Jesus did at Calvary and uh, or just how our sins have been forgiven. And Father, I pray if there's one watching this today without Christ, one who has never believed the gospel, I pray that you would just Im impress upon their heart the importance of believing that Jesus died for them. Father, I just pray that you would give us wisdom and understanding as we look at the scriptures this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, I want you to just quickly look over at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, our text this morning is going to be in Philippians chapter number 1. But 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I want you to notice in verse number 10, the Bible says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, Okay, uh, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we learn that one day we're all going to have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to have to give an account of what we have done in the bodies that we have been given. And really, for the believer, uh, everything comes down to what you're going to do in the body that you have. Uh, listen, we understand, I, I mentioned about it uh, last week, how we talked about the, the hope of the gospel. We know that we have a new body coming. But for right now, you need to make that determination and you need to decide what you are going to do in the body that you now have. Uh, one day, uh, listen, we're going to have to stand before that judgment seat of Christ. Uh, you know, some people, and, and the reality of it is, uh, this morning, you have the liberty to do whatever you want in the body you have. But I want you to remember what Paul said in Galatians chapter 6, verse number 7. If you sow to the flesh, what happens? You will of the flesh reap corruption. Uh, of course, it's very important what we do in these bodies that we have. And uh, over in our text in Philippians chapter 1, of course, Paul is writing to the, while he's imprisoned uh, in Rome, and uh, perhaps he's only a few years from his death. Uh, I think it's difficult to really know exactly the, the time frame. But in verse 20, there are some things I think that jump out and stand out to us. Uh, Paul says that in nothing shall he be ashamed. Of course, we know that uh, Paul wasn't one to let shame get the best of him. He wasn't one uh, that was going to allow uh, important things to be covered up. He wanted Christ to be revealed to people. Hey, he wanted Christ to be uh, set forth. He obviously went everywhere preaching the gospel, and, and he did not want the gospel of Jesus Christ hidden. And he was going to do this with boldness. He was going to have full courage, as we read. And of course... Uh, uh, boldness or courage, uh, you know, really it's just uh, persistence in the face of resistance. Uh, you know, as we look at verse number 20, I want to focus on that next part there. He says, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body. Listen, we understand that one day we're going to have to give an account. We're going to have to stand before that judgment seat of Christ. And it's going to come down to what we do in our body. 
And notice what Paul says here in Philippians chapter 1, verse 20. So now also Christ shall be magnified in my body. Uh, he says, as always, so now. Paul is basically saying, hey, Christ has been magnified in my body. And you know what? He's going to continue to be magnified in my body. Now this morning, I just want to draw out a few things about magnification. You know, when you magnify something or when you, you know, put something uh, like we may like to say under the microscope, you're going to notice that it does a few things. Uh, the first thing I want you to realize is that it makes things appear much larger. You know, it's interesting when something gets magnified, it will appear larger or bigger than it was before. You know, you may live your life this morning, and you may live your life as the, the top dog, as the, 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 the big man, or, uh, you know, you may think you are Mr. Big, but that is not the way it's supposed to be. Christ, our Savior, is supposed to be that, if I can say it, Mr. Big. He's the one who's supposed to be the important one. He's the one who is supposed to stand out. John the Baptist understood this principle better than most. What did he say regarding Christ in John chapter 3, verse 30? Of course, we remember that very uh, that, 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 that memorable phrase. He says, he must increase, I must decrease. Now, the interesting thing about magnification is that the subject you are magnifying does not change one bit. When you magnify something, and maybe you have a magnifying glass and you hold it up to something, that object that you're looking at doesn't change. The composition of that object doesn't change. The characteristics, the features, none of that changes whatsoever. The only thing that changes is your perception. Listen, when Christ is magnified, in your body, it's not Christ who changes. Christ does not actually get larger, but people will perceive him as larger, as bigger. Listen, to get to the place where people will look at us and perceive Christ as larger and see him in a bigger way, it's going to involve ourselves to actually become smaller. When we decrease, and as we submit ourselves to him and lower ourselves, that's when Christ will be able to become larger. He will be magnified in our body. You know, the question stands today is, how big is Christ in your body today? When the world looks at you, do they see a big you? Or do they see a big Christ? You know, I, several years ago, going back to the 19th century, there were some popular churches in the city of London. Those churches were pastored by a fellow by the name of Joseph Parker. Another one was pastored by the name, I think many people will recognize this name, Charles Spurgeon. And the account was given of uh, some people who were visiting London. And one of the things that they wanted to do is, is they wanted to visit these churches, and they had one Sunday to go to these churches. So uh, they decided that they had heard really great things about Joseph Parker. So they went to uh, the church that he pastored in the morning. And they walked out of that service, and their response was, What a preacher! What a preacher! That evening, they decided that they were going to go to the Metropolitan Baptist Tabernacle and 
to hear Charles Spurgeon. And as they left that place, their response was much different. As they left that service, they walked out saying, what a savior. What a savior. Listen, when the world looks at us, do they see us? Is, is it all us that shines through? Do they just see the same old, same old as they look at everyone else? Or do they see something different? Do they see someone else? Do they see Christ standing out in you, larger than life, if I can say it like that? Many times, it can be our abilities or our talents that stand out and, and uh, are seen by many others. But we need to get to the place where Christ is the one that stands out. When people look at us, they don't see us, they see the Christ in us. Listen, there's nothing wrong with being unique. There's nothing wrong with being peculiar. Paul, his determination as he writes, uh, while he's in prison even, says that his desire was to continue to let Christ being magnified in his body. Listen, he wanted Christ to appear larger than what Paul was. He wanted Christ to appear larger than anything else. He wanted Christ to be magnified. Do you have that desire this morning? You know, the, the second thing I think about when I think about some something being magnified is not only do they appear larger, or does it appear larger, but things that are magnified also appear near. They appear near. And that makes sense because as things become larger, it actually gives you the sense that it is nearer. Yesterday morning, I was out delivering some uh, donation receipts to some people. And on the way back, I was driving, I think it's Highway Drive, I could be wrong, but it was right down there beside the river. And I noticed in one of the trees, a big eagle. And I had my camera with me, so the first thing is, I did is I pulled over and I, I got a stop for an eagle. And uh, I began to start snapping some pictures. And I tried to get in uh, closer to this eagle, and, and like they always do, it flew off to the other side of the river. So uh, I just felt that that eagle was dropping the challenge and laying down the gauntlet, so I said, you know what? I am going to go to the other side of the river. Now, I used my brains. I didn't try to swim across. Uh, I, I drove around, crossed the bridge, and went through trail. And I came around the, the road heading towards Casino there. And I noticed that there he was in a tree uh, on that other side of the river. So I got out, and I was able to get my tripod set up, and I was able to start shooting uh, this uh, eagle. And, uh, you know, I... I I was able to get some, some, some decent pictures uh, of this eagle. And uh, later that day, I began to show some people uh, one of the pictures that I took. And this is one of the things that, that one of the first comments that were made to me uh, is that you are right up close. Or some people, ask, how close were you able to get to that thing? See, uh, one of those things that, uh, one of the things that a magnified image does is suggest a decreased distance of separation. It makes the object uh, of focus appear that much closer. Listen, the thing about Christ when he is magnified is that he doesn't get any nearer or farther from us at all. Uh, over in Colossians chapter 1, uh, verse number 27, of course, uh, we read in verse 27, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is, what is it? Christ in you. 
the hope of glory. We understand that Christ is in us, of course, through the, the Holy Ghost. And, uh, of course, there's other scriptures as well that we can look at. Uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, the Bible says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth, where? In me. That's what the Bible reads. Now, Christ does not get any nearer to the world when he is magnified in our bodies. He has always been here. He has not changed. He doesn't change his composition, his form in any way. We have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost does not get bigger or smaller. But what happens is he's magnified in our body. He will begin to appear near. Listen, the world's view of him will become, will appear to be less distanced, if we can say it like that. He will appear much nearer than he did before. Now, some people like to talk like there's some magical solution to magnifying Christ in your body. There are some groups that think there's some sort of special anointing that comes. Maybe they're thinking something that happened like on in Acts chapter 2. And, and really, it's just simply uh, simple how this takes place. Uh, see this book we have? Uh, uh, just read it. Study it. Allow those words to speak to you. Read it. Obey it. Apply it to your life. That is the best way for Christ to be magnified in your body. And listen, as he gets magnified in your body, not only will he appear larger to the world around you, but he will also begin to appear nearer to them. You know, as a pastor, one of my biggest concerns, uh, in one of my greatest desires for each and every one of you, is that you spend time in the scriptures. That you spend time reading your Bible, studying it, rightly dividing it. That you don't rely on past tradition or, or past experiences, but you study to show yourself approved unto God. Listen, if you're spending little or no time in the scriptures, how on earth would Christ be magnified in your life? How is it that the people that you will minister to will see Christ as nearer to them if he's not even magnified in your body? You know, I've noticed on that a lot of cars, and I believe my, our car is like this, but we have those little side mirrors uh, on the doors. And uh, they actually do kind of the opposite of magnifying. They kind of give you a wide-angle view. And they actually make things appear smaller. That is why many of them will have the message that uh, the objects, uh, you know, in the mirror are closer than, uh, are much closer than they appear. Because when you look in the mirror, they appear to be further away wonder how many believers today should probably have a, a message like that. Christ is closer than he appears. Listen, Christ may be in them, but he may not always appear that close to the world around. Listen, we want Christ to be magnified in our body. Listen, when the world looks at us, we ought to be a, a magnifying glass for Jesus Christ. We ought to be something that when people look at us, they not only see a big Christ, a big Savior, a large a Savior, a, a Savior that's larger than life, but he ought to appear very close and very near. 
The third thing I've noticed about magnification is not only does it make things appear larger, not only does it make things appear nearer, but with magnification, you will begin to see details that you have never seen before. Details that perhaps before went unnoticed or unseen that will begin to stand out. Just uh, in the spring or going into early summer, uh, early in the mornings, I would often head down to the dam and uh, down by the, the Juanita Dam there. And, and I think most of you know there's some osprey that nest there. And, and I would often go down there to try to take pictures of these osprey. And, and uh, you know, for a long time, I was very unsuccessful at it. Uh, I, I would try to, to, to get them, and, and they would often fly off, and, and, you know, it was almost like they were taunting me. But later on, I was able to get a little closer, and I noticed something in one of the photos I took, is that the bird had a small metal tag, or it looked like a metal tag, it was a band around its one leg. I never noticed that, that, that up to that point, as, as I saw these things flying around, I never paid attention to it, I was never able to spot that, but as I was able to get in close and get a magnification of that picture, uh, of that bird, I noticed that tag. See, details begin, begin to stand out. Of course, uh, you know, I, I was debating about whether I'm going to use this illustration, and I know people are tired of hearing about this, but we understand we're dealing with this thing called a coronavirus. And I don't know if you know why it's called a coronavirus or not, but it's basically because it has crown-like thorns on its surface. This virus has crown-like thorns on its surface. Well, how do they know that? How do they get this information? Well, they use things called electron microscopes. And of course, it magnifies things. Uh, so uh, the things that uh, are, for the most part, undetectable with our human eyes can become revealed. And of course, when they use those microscopes and, and they begin to look at these things, they begin to reveal details about uh, these small things. And listen, when Christ gets magnified in our bodies, the details of Jesus Christ will begin to be on display for all to see. It only makes sense as he now appears larger and he now appears nearer that there's also going to be details that previously went unnoticed. When he gets magnified in you, this world will begin to see him in a whole new light. And again, we want the world to see Christ. We are not the important ones. It's Christ that the world needs. But as he's magnified in us, it even helps our perception of him. When he is magnified, listen, his, his grace is going to become much more real. It's become, going to become much more apparent. When, when he's magnified, his mercy is going to stand out in a greater way. Listen, when Christ is magnified, things that we talked about, like, his, like the hope of glory and the hope that we have, that's going to seem much more real and much more sure. The world does not need to see more of us. It needs to see more of Christ. It needs a clearer picture, a, a clearer image. <coughs> Excuse me. Of the only one that can save them. Listen, when Christ is magnified in our body, 
He will appear larger. He will appear nearer. And details about our Savior will begin to stand out. You know, Paul determined that just as Christ always was, he was going to continue to be magnified in his body. The question, the challenge I have for you today, is Christ magnified in your body? How does he appear in you to the world around you? Look at verse 21. Notice what Paul says after he mentions his determination to have Christ magnified. He continues on, he says, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. What is it for you to live? Listen, for you to live, is it you? Listen, if for me to live is all about me, then I need to make changes. I've got some serious problems. If for you to live is all about you, you have some serious problems. Listen, it's Christ that needs to be magnified. Christ is the one that needs to stand out. Christ is the one that needs to appear larger, appear nearer. He is the one. Uh, that needs to be shown in great detail. Listen, our lives ought to be centered and focused on the Lord Jesus Christ so that he can be magnified in our bodies. Is he magnified in yours today? Let's pray together this morning. Father, Lord, I thank you for your goodness to us. And I thank you for all that Christ has done and for all that he is. And Father, this morning, as we consider this passage, as we consider this truth, Lord, I pray that going forward, we would determine that your son would be magnified in us that he would be the one that stands out, that he would appear large and he would appear close. I wonder how often Christ seems very small and very distant to the world around us. Because we don't allow him to be magnified. Father, this morning, I pray you prick our hearts. Challenge us. Speak to us. Allow your Son to be magnified in us. We ask it in Jesus' name. For your glory. Amen. Amen. Let Christ be magnified in your body today. Hope you have a great week. Goodbye. God bless.